praise the Lord. We are welcoming His presence in Jesus Christ's name. Quickly, shall we have a word of prayer? Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for your love and for your grace. Thank you for making us partakers of the bread of life. Thank you for what you are doing, what you are about to do, and what you will continue to do in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the Living Word Assembly. Thank you for our homes, our loved ones, our lives, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for this hour. And thank you, Lord, for bringing forth a message in this hour. Lord, as I go into your word, because we have entered in a time when man no longer speak, but Christ himself. Father, may you speak to your children, Lord. Father, let there be life, a raising of life, God's own life, within every voice that will be listening to the sound of my voice this hour, Lord. Oh, Father, we speak, oh God, that you will open our eyes, oh God, open our mouth, oh God. Grant us utterance, Lord, that your word will come forth with power, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Heal every sickness, Lord, as many that are sick, sickness of the soul and the body who speak healing in Jesus Christ's name. Father, heal every broken home. Let peace, joy, and harmony be restored in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God this afternoon, I'm going to speak on the heavenly feast breaking of the seals. Now we cannot have a heavenly feast without the breaking of the seals. Now this is very important. I'm going to be very, very, I'm going to take it easy. I pray the Lord help me. I'm going to take it calmly this morning so that we can understand what the Spirit is saying. We cannot have a heavenly feast without the breaking of the seals. It is not possible. The breaking of the seals opens the heavenly feast unto us. Because as the seal is being broken, Christ is being revealed. Now, we have not stopped our topic on the feast, on the trumpet. We cannot talk about the trumpet without talking about what the trumpet is doing. Praise be the name of the Lord. Now, Pay close attention to this. The resurrection of Jesus Christ caused an appearing on the earth. When Jesus Christ resurrected, there was an appearing. And the appearing was not just the appearing of Jesus himself. There was also the appearing of just men. Praise be the name of the Lord. So that is what the resurrection of Jesus Christ brought forth. 
Now, the resurrection of the two witnesses, the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11, what he brought forth was an earthquake on the earth. There was an earthquake, and in that earthquake, the one third company died. There was a death of the one third company. We're going to go into these things in details. Now, everything that happened in Revelation, because the Bible says it says the revelation of Jesus Christ is the revelation of a person. A person that has been hidden. Hidden before the foundation of the world. Christ has been hidden. And Christ himself is God himself. Because the Father is revealed in Christ. Let somebody say amen to that. Now notice. So much is going to change there's going to be a change there's going to be a change in ministration there's going to be a change in preaching there's going to be a change in the breaking of the world because we are going into the ministration of the spirits we are going into the heavenly feasts the feast that is not earthly. The ministration of the spirit himself. Now I want to lay a background so that we understand it. Remember, I'm going to take it calmly. Now it's important to understand what the appearing of the Lord is doing to us. We started from the voice in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, we discover Christ that was in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Remember, there is a shift, there is a transition. There's a transition from physical to spiritual. There's a shift. Now notice. In the candlestick realm, Christ was in the midst of the seven golden candlestick. In the midst of the seven golden candlestick. He was in the midst. And listen. It was the voice, the shouts that John had when he turned. He saw Christ in the midst. It was a shout. And remember, Paul said that the Lord is descending with a shout. This is very important. The descending of the Lord is not what we think. Listen, the Lord can descend in a wonderful and anointing way and heal you of your sick. He can descend and do some supernatural. That is not the descending I'm talking about. Now, the descending that I'm talking about is the Lord himself descending in a completeness of himself and unveiling himself in that manner from glory to glory. And the descending of the Lord is in his word. The Lord Jesus Christ said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. So the descending is in the preaching of the word. Paul said, how can they hear if there is no preacher? How can there be a preacher if they are not sent? So the descending of the Lord is in the preaching of the word. Now, no, 
notice. The New Testament started with a shout in the wilderness. It started with John the Baptist. The voice in the wilderness. The children of Israel found themselves in a spiritual wilderness condition. Now, this is very important. We are talking about the New Testament. And the gospel started, started and was preached to a people in a spiritual wilderness condition. They were in expectation of the Messiah. They were in a spiritual wilderness condition. And what is a wilderness? Now listen. A wilderness is an uncultivated, uninhabited, and inhospitable region. That is a wilderness. There is no life in the wilderness. There is no habitation in the wilderness. You can hardly find food and water in the wilderness because there is no life there. And that is the condition of man in Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 1. He said the earth was void. He said darkness covered the face of the deep. That was the condition of man. That was talking about the soul of man. So the wilderness we are talking about is the condition of the soul of man. That was the condition of the people. When John the Baptist came forth, that was the condition of the people. When Jesus Christ came forth, the Bible says that the people were dwelling in the region of death region of darkness and those that were dwelling in that region light was spring to them that, that was a condition even today many are in that wilderness condition and in that wilderness condition there was a voice in the wilderness and that voice in the wilderness becomes food to the people become water to the people just like christ himself was food and water to the children of israel coming out of egypt so that voice become food become water to the people and in the new testament is not talking about the voice of a man he's not talking about the voice of anybody he's talking about the voice of christ himself We have come from the position of religion where we are hearing the voices of men where we are hearing the voices of pastors until we can hear the voice of christ himself the voice of the one that is in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks Now listen, in that wilderness condition, the Bible says the preaching of John was the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. There was an awareness. There was a light. There was an understanding. And that understanding is giving us a new kind of understanding, a new kind of mind, a new kind of thinking. And that understanding is that the kingdom of God is within us. There is a Christ in the midst. Since Jesus 
Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ is still here. He said, I will not leave you or forsake you. I will not leave you comfortless. He, he, he has gone nowhere. He is here. But he is hidden to the carnal mind. Hidden to the carnal eyes. Only the one with the eyes of the spirit can see him. So we have come from the hearing of his voice. And we have been raised to the place where we can behold his glory. Let somebody say amen to that. Now listen. Every scripture is testifying of you. Is the testimony of you. Now listen, we have come from hearing the voice in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, there is a pointing, just like John the Baptist pointed to Jesus. is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Brother, we are coming out of the wilderness. We are out of the wilderness. We are out of the wilderness of the church system. We are out of the wilderness of the church confusion. We are out of the candlestick realm. We are out of the realm that needs a constant servicing. We are out of that realm. We are entering into this realm of the spirits. We are entering into the throne realm. We are entering into the ministration of Christ himself. We are entering into the realm which the water of life is going to bring forth life in our wilderness. That is where we are going to. Now remember, in the candlestick realm, there was Christ within, in the midst. Then when we move up to the throne realm, there is also Christ in the midst. Now let's turn to Revelation. Revelation Chapter 5. We're going to read from verse 1. Remember, we have come from the wilderness. And we have heard the shouts. And listen, the shouts is Christ himself but not yet completely revealed to us he's gradually revealing himself so we have received a seal package we have received a package from the father but this package is sealed and Christ himself is that seal. The Holy Spirit is the seal. And this seal is sealed unto redemption. Not unto tomorrow. Not unto next tomorrow. It is Christ himself revealing himself until we are completely redeemed. As he breaks the seal, he's revealing himself. Now, the breaking of the seal is the ministration of Christ himself. When we move out of the seal and enter into the trumpet, it is the ministration of the body of Christ. And we're going to take it step by step. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will break it down to us. 
when Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ came as the Son of God. And the Bible says he was being made manifest from glory to glory. Now, this is very important. If you miss this, you miss the whole of the teaching. This is very, very important. There was a glory in him. There was a life in him. That life faced every other life and overcame it. He overcame this physical life by that life. He overcame death by that life. He was resurrected by that life. And Paul says, if the spirit that was in Christ, if the same spirit be in us, that spirit is going to quicken our mortal body. It's going to be a source of life to us. It's going to be our breath. And the inbreeding of that spirit to our spirit will give us God's life. He was a complete package. At age 12, the package was revealed. Age 30, the package was revealed. And the same way as he is, so are we in the earth. So are we. There has been an awakening. There has been an understanding. There has been an enlightening. And that enlightening, that understanding, that light is revealing to us that we are not ordinary men. It's revealing to us that there's a life that is inside of us. We are predestinated with a life of God to be made manifest to the world. It has brought an understanding to us that the kingdom, the rulership, the authority of God is within us. Now listen. He's not telling you that he's within us because you received the Holy Spirit. Now listen, before the preaching of this gospel, the Holy Spirit was not yet given. The Holy Spirit was not yet given. Now listen. When the Holy Spirit comes, upon what is the Holy Spirit coming upon? That is the question we must answer. It's like the rain, the rain that is coming upon wheat and tear. The rain has nothing to do with the wheat or the tear. All it does is to bring an increase, to bring a harvest. This is the same way the Holy Spirit is coming upon. Both the good and the bad. We are not talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. We are talking about receiving the word. Receiving Christ. The preaching of the word. The truth. The Lord just said the word that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. We are talking about receiving the word of God. We've come to the place where the word that we have received is his word. And that word has become our life. The Bible says, as many that receive him, to them that is given the power to become the sons of God. Before the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, 
they have already received the world and they have grown in that world they have grown and until they become one with the world the bible says that we are in one accord that one accord does not talk about religious accord or the oneness that is in man it is talking about the oneness that is in christ individually they came to that oneness there was no duality in them anymore they have become one with the world before the holy spirit was released and they became the first fruits to come to maturity they become that waste harvest it was a harvest they were that waste harvest And there is another harvest. And this harvest is the grape harvest. And we individually, by the ministration of the Spirit that is coming from Pentecost, because Pentecost is a ministration of the gifts, from that ministration, we must come to maturity. We must come to fullness. We must come to the full statue of Christ. Now, the full statue of Christ is individually. You must grow until your spirit is no longer your spirit. You must grow until your spirit is his spirit. You grow until it's no longer the voice in the wilderness where we are pointing and pointing and pointing. We grow until where we become the voice. Not pointing, but it's now the voice. When the Lord Jesus Christ will say, say, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Where is no longer thus say the Lord. It becomes very, verily, I say unto you. It's a ministration that is higher. Higher than the two witnesses of Revelation 11. We'll get to all that. Just want to lay a background and a foundation. So we are a full package. We are complete in him. He descended with a shout. He descended with a shout. And we turned, we saw him. And we saw him within us. Not just within Paul or Peter. He's within us. We saw him in us. And we have turned. We have turned from carnal to spiritual we've turned we've turned from religion to life we have turned from the first man to the last man and as we have turned we saw him in our midst now listen that was a turn, but this is a rising up. When that shall become a voice in you, you are raised up. Because the feast is a heavenly feast. It's not a carnal feast. It has nothing to do with carnal. The Lord is about to show us things. That human eye cannot see. That human mind cannot comprehend. We are moving from golden candlestick. We are moving to the throne ring. Now, listen. Pay attention to this. This is very, very important. Don't miss it. Now, let's go to the scripture. Remember, I'm talking on the heavenly feast, breaking of the seals, one. 
Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. John was raised up. When he was in the candlestick realm, he never saw the book. But now he has come up. He's seen the book. But this book is sealed. The book is written within and sealed on the back side with seven seals. What is this book? Now notice. One thing is to see this book. Another thing is to open the book. And what does it take to open the book? It takes a life that is crucified. When John was caught up into the throne room, what he saw, unlike what he saw in the candlestick realm, in the candlestick realm, he was seeing so many nonsense that is going on in the religious realm. He was seeing the spirit of Jezebel at work. He was seeing the spirit of Balaam, Nicolaitan spirit. He was seeing so many things. But up there on the throne realm, he saw all living creatures. Now, King James used the word beasts to explain it. It's not beasts. Search for the Greek word for that word. It is living creatures. He saw four living creatures and 24 elders. Now, the four living creatures types the kingship. The 24 elders types the priesthood. Remember, he has made us priests and kings. And we shall reign on the earth. Kingship and priesthood. That is what he saw. And in the midst of that, there is a lamb. The midst of the throne. Not in the midst of the candlestick. Not in the midst of the seven candlestick. In the midst of the throne. So that, that is why it's a heavenly feast. It's not a feast that is going on in the candlestick realm. You must rise above the candlestick realm to partake of what is going on in the heavenly realm. It must rise above the the soul realm into the spirit realm. This is what is going on. There is a feast that is being prepared, that is being released in the realm of the spirits. Let somebody say amen to that. Now remember, this is in the midst of the throne. And what do we have in the throne? We have kingship, we have priesthood. And in the midst of the throne, there was a lamb. A lamb that has been slain. So the only thing that can open the seal is a crucified life. Flesh and blood cannot do it. Because John that no man was able to open it. Flesh and blood cannot do it. It must come to the point where flesh is completely crucified. It's only the lamb, a crucified life. That is why the ministry 
of the two witnesses was outside of the tabernacle. When we get to Revelation chapter 11, you understand that the two witnesses was outside of the tabernacle. And the Lord said, leave that part. Measure the temple. We are to measure the temple. We are to measure insides. The holiest of holy. The life that is God's own life. Where there is no life of man. The only thing we have there is the blood of Christ. And the blood of Christ is his life, is his spirit. We spoke about coming to a union last week. So we have received his spirit. We have received his word. We have received his life. We have become one with him. We have joined with him. And as we have joined with him, our old life is being crucified. And not just being crucified, it's being taken far away. Far away from, listen, very far. Far away from us. Far away until we are no longer man. We are completely spirits. God is raising a people in this generation. He's raising a people, a people who has the life of God, not the life of man. So the book we are talking about is the life of God, is our life. Our life, our hidden life. We have seen this life. Now listen. On that throne realm, John was weeping. Listen, there is no there is no time to weep on the throne realm. Your weeping cannot change anything. Weeping is a sign of weakness. Oh, oh, you weep, you weep, you complain. No, it cannot change anything. Now let's go back to the scripture. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders, now, he said, And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon that see this condition is many of us john represents many we came to to christ to cry to weep to complain in the throne realm there is no weeping there The only thing we have there is the elder. 24 elders. 24 is not a literal number. Is 12 plus 12. We have 24. And 12 is the government of God. That's what we have. The perfect government of God. That's what you have on the throne realm. And what brings about that government is priesthood. Priesthood. The flesh must be crucified with Christ. That is what brings about that government. There are so many things 
to irritate you. So many things to make you angry. So many things to make you cause God. But when you are crucified, when the flesh is crucified, the devil comes to you and has nothing in you. The devil can tempt you with the riches of the world. Riches is crucified with Christ. Can tempt you with flashy women. Tempt you with flashy lifestyle. Tempt you with everything that it has. But that has been crucified. The devil comes and have nothing in you. You are not offended. You are a priest. Not a priest according to the order of Aaron, but a priest according to the order of Mekisedek. The flesh has been crucified. There is no longer offense in you. You are not offended. Nothing offends you. You can get angry, but the sun will not come down in your anger. You know what it means for the sun to come down? The sun is the light of God. You are not angry until the light of God becomes darkness. Your anger will work out the love of God. Flesh has been crucified. That is the life we have on the throne realm, crucified with Christ. Somebody we ask, was Paul on the throne realm? Yes. Paul himself testified, said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes, it's not I that live it, but Christ liveth in me. Say the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The faith that you have now is not the amount of money you have in your bank account. The faith that you have now is not because you are 100% healthy. The faith that you have now it's not because everything is moving well for you. But the faith that you have is the faith of the Son of God. That is what you can find on the throne realm. The flesh has been put to death. The flesh has been crucified. There is priesthood there. Priesthood in God's government. One of the elders say, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. There is a life that is within you. Christ himself, the overcomer himself, the conqueror himself, the one that overcame all things, the victorious one, let that victorious one rise up in you. We see the ministration of the son of David. David was a king. A king that overcame the enemy that were occupying Zion. Strong enemies. David, the lion, brought them down. And Christ is our David. He's the one that brought down all those strongholds 
occupying our Zion, occupying our spirits. They have taken rulership of our spirit. As we begin to proceed, you begin to see this is working. And this walking is not a story tell. This walking is the revelation of Jesus Christ that is in you. Paul said, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Not Christ outside of you. So this is going on in you. A new man is raised up a new spirit is raised up the old you is dead dead with his old ways dead with his old thinking dead with his old imagination there is a new you that is arising and that new you is the spirit of christ He's unveiling himself in the sevenfold of his person. He's revealing his wisdom, his might, his power. Revealing the sevenfold of his person. You will get that sevenfold on the throne realm. When we see the description of the Christ, the Christ that was once in the midst of the golden candlestick, he has raised us up out of the candlestick realm, and he has brought us up onto the throne realm. And there's a ministration of Christ that is going on in us. That shout has become a voice and is about to reveal himself. We are about to enter into a new ministration, the ministration of the spirits. A new kind of life, a crucified life. We are about to come to a place where every move, every ministration of God in the past, just like as it was in the days of Jesus Christ. The ministration of Elijah and the ministration of Moses came to an end. He died and was glorified and was raised up. So we have come to that point. We have come to the point where every move of God in the past time is coming to an end and a new thing is about to begin. We have desired the fullness of God. We have desired all of his personality. We have desired all of his person. And we are about to have our desire granted. Because we are coming to a place in Christ where our desire is granted. Our desire becomes his desire. Our voice becomes his voice. And there is a thundering. And there is an answer of prayer. And there is so much thing going on on the earth. Because a voice that is proceeding out of the throne is the voice of Christ himself. It's not a voice of defeat. It's not a voice of weakness. It's not a voice of disappointment. It's a voice of victory. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Though the flesh is put to death, there is a victory in every step of the way. There is a victory in all the battles of life that we suffer. There is a victory in all the hunger that we suffered. 
There's a victory in everything that we suffered. We are coming from a wilderness journey of the candlestick realm. Where we have been subjected through subjected to different kind of fire. And now we are being raised up to victory. He said the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Now somebody will say, who is Judah? Judah is a tribe in Israel. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, he said, I did not come for the, I came for the lost sheep of Israel. When you think like that, you are still in the candlestick realm. Now, we are receiving the mind of Christ. We are thinking like Christ. And we know who the lost sheep of Israel is. The lost sheep of Israel is not those living in Palestine. The lost sheep of Israel is not those living in Samaria. The Lordship of Israel is the body of Christ. Is the offspring of God. That is the Lordship of Israel. Is the offspring of God. Is the Spirit. That offspring of the Father in us is the Lordship of Israel. And in the dealing of God, when the Spirit is raised up, His government is established. His work begins in us. So many things is going to change. Our language will change. Because as we proceed, we'll see there was a new song. Everything about us will change. The way we preach will change. The way we talk will change. Everything about us will change. Because we are now not just preaching about the throne realm. But the throne realm, we are now living in a higher life. We have become that realm. And out of us is proceeding the word of life. Today is just an introduction. I tell you, it is not just a preaching. It must be an experience. And when we are preaching this word to you, we are speaking the word of life unto you. And let this word become spirit. And let it become your life. And you are going to see the seals being broken and Christ being revealed in you. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We have seen his leg, but we are about to see his face. The honor that Moses did not get is what we are getting. The honor to see his face. Moses didn't get it. But the Lord has granted us that honor. And Paul said, as we look at him, 
we are being changed from glory to glory. The face we were formerly seeing in the candlestick realm, we were looking through a dark glass. There was something blocking his expression in the candlestick realm. Today we are not looking through a dark glass. We are seeing his face clearly. When you look at the mirror, who do you see? Now we are moving into that realm. When you look at the mirror, who do you see? When you speak, who is speaking? When you move, who is moving? A realm where we are completely spirits. We are every imagination is nailed at the cross of Calvary. Every vain imagination, every man-made imagination, every carnal thinking, every carnal mind is nailed at this cross. Then you begin to see the seals beginning to open. Many have preached the seal. They tell you the seal is this. Listen, if the life of Christ is not becoming your life, the seal is not yet open. It's just a history book. And our prayer is that let that lion be raised up in me. Let that kingship and priesthood be made manifest in my life. And, and let the life of Christ be revealed in me. So that I can become life and light to the world. God bless you all. Let, let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your word that has come forth. We are so grateful, Lord, today. As we are preparing to enter into a new feast. Because you have prepared a table for us, Lord. As we are preparing, oh God, to enter into a new life. Father, we pray, oh God. Make the earth our footstool. May the kingship and the priest he priesthood and the priestly life of Christ be raised within us. Let every passion of the first man die. Let every life and deception of the first man die. Let every darkness of the first man pass away, O oh God. The earth has long awaited the manifestation of sons, not just sons of men, but the manifestation of the sons of God. That is the only manifestation that will bring about liberation on the earth. And this ministry, Lord, is our ministry. Father, Lord, let Christ be revealed in us, in completeness, in the name of Jesus Christ. May every life of the first Adam be completely be forgotten. May all things pass away. Let everything become new, Lord. Oh, Lord. As we enter into this ministration, Father, let the Spirit in us be awakened, Father. Let the Spirit of Christ in us be raised up, O oh God. Let every carnality die in the name of Jesus Christ. 
May we experience a life of victory. May we experience a life of dominion, Lord. Grant it, O Father. Bless your word in our heart, Lord. As your son will be coming for two hours from now, Lord, speak through him, Father. And let the voice of the seventh angel continue to thunder. And let your will be done on our earth. As it is done in our heaven, Father. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.